What's up, guys? Zach Evnesh here, your host and your boy. We're back with the Iron Roots podcast brought to you by Play. And in this episode, I'm going to be talking about a collection of articles written in the late 60s, that's 50 years ago, that still to this day have changed the way we train athletes and powerlifters. This is Play's Iron Roots, a podcast dedicated to uncovering the strength legends, the training methods, and the stories around physical culture and iron history. I'm your host, Zach Evanish. Grab yourself a protein shake, chalk up, and prepare to travel back in time to some of the most awe-inspiring stories of iron history. It's go time. All right, guys, so I'm digging into my favorite book, Gifted to Me, by Jim Wendler, which was gifted to him by Dr. Ken Leisner, and I've spoken about this book and articles through this collection of articles before, and these are all the original West Side Barbell articles, and one of the earliest articles about this style of training, they called it sectional development. So, If you're listening on iTunes or listening anywhere this podcast can be found, you're going to want to watch the video because we're going to be putting a lot of cool photos in here. So sectional development is now what we call rack training or power rack training. But the way Bill Peanuts West looked at it was he was a very eccentric guy and he would pay attention to when he would miss a lift, whether it was the squat, bench, or the deadlift. And he would do the same thing for his training partners. Essentially, it was his team of powerlifters. So he would see if somebody would miss a deadlift at the top. And then he started thinking, what if we started overloading, working that area that you're weakest in, that area that you're missing the deadlift in? Same thing with the bench press. What if you can't get the bar off of your chest? He would set the pins a little bit above the chest, and then he would press up to those pins or... He would start the pins in the middle or at the top. The basis behind what he called as sectional development, which then became known as simply rack training, was it built confidence, right? It allowed you to handle heavier weights in a lockout position. So it would build your confidence. So when you did approach a heavier weight, you'd been there before. You felt the weight in your hands. And then the other thing that it did was by attacking the weak points, it allowed you to break through what they called as plateaus or sticking points. And these were big buzzwords back in the 60s about how do I get, whether I was a powerlifter, how do I get my deadlift to go up? How do I get my squat to go up? Or if I was a bodybuilder, it was like, hey, how do I get my biceps bigger? So they would do overloads from the top or somebody would take the bar from the top, step back and do a slow eccentric. And there's multiple articles that were written or when they interviewed Bill Peanuts West on this, on the sectional development and the power training, the power act training. And another thing they did was the kind of like the defying gravity, which was the slow negatives. So they would load up a heavier than normal barbell for the deadlift or the bench press. And if it was the deadlift, they would be on blocks and you would just stand up with it the blocks would be moved out of the way and then the lifter would do a slow eccentric to develop the eccentric strength because they knew that you're stronger lowering the weight than you are during the concentric. And by overloading that area, it gave that lifter confidence and then that lifter had more of a psych advantage and a physical advantage for when they were going to deadlift and max out or enter a powerlifting meet. And these articles collectively were from the mid to late 60s. Some of them may have been written around 70 or 71. And what's interesting is at the time of this recording, here we are midway through 2019, and we're still utilizing these methods. We see, of course, Louis Simmons utilizing rack pulls and floor presses and squatting from the pins or squatting from the chains in different positions. I've spoken with many strength coaches in the NFL who are doing things like squatting from the pin. So you start from the bottom and work your way out of the hole, which makes it harder. Or they're just doing limited range um, movements. And sometimes 
Those limited range movements are done in season so the athlete doesn't have to go through the full range of motion and it helps limit and reduce wear and tear. For example, I've seen football players work just the lockout on the bench press or they're doing the floor press, which would be very similar to the guys that were pressing off of the pins halfway down. It limited that range of motion. And here we are, 2019, some 50 years later, still utilizing these methods. Now, in the late 60s, with all the um, energy and enthusiasm going into can we land a person on the moon, it was interesting to see the way they, they worded these articles as they spoke about things like rocket launching your strength to the moon or creating space age strength. And the way they worded these articles in the magazines were extremely inspiring. And we could almost say um, they almost brainwashed people because you were so fired up by the words they used that you just felt like this is the way I'm going to have to train. It made you believe in the program compared to today we have people kind of calling their own programs and naming it after themselves and people get confused. Whereas in those late 60s, it was like, here are the lessons from the power champs. Here are the lessons from the strongest men in the world. And you followed suit with those things. So I wanna give you guys a couple of examples of how you could utilize some of the rack training and these sexual movements to help you get stronger or to help you avoid injury. So number one, one of the favorite things I love to do is just floor presses. I limit the full range bench press. It's a little bit of a shoulder saver and it's a longevity plan. It's something that I look at, how can I help this athlete uh, get more longevity and get more bang from his buck without beating up the shoulders or the elbow joints or even the muscles, right? Beating up on the triceps especially in season, not just in the off season. The other way I look at it is if I'm training a high school athlete, I know that when he's in the high school, he's very likely doing full range bench presses the majority of the time. So that being said, I might do lockouts from the top half, or I might do, like I said, the floor press. Some of the other things we'll do with squats, and this was inspired to me by one of my buddies who coaches in the NFL, is he said that he has his lineman squatting out of the hole to develop that starting strength. And when I look through some of these uh, photos, you'll see that Bill Peanuts West and his guys are doing these different squats, different deadlifts from different starting points to develop a different kind of strength. So if we're always starting from the body, fully extended arms or fully extended body, and then we squat, it's different than if we're going from that dead stop or dead stop. So by doing that, we work the body differently. We're basically incorporating the early days of the conjugate method, and it excites the athlete. It keeps the monotony away from things. And athletes today, more than ever, because of how they're so um, connected to their phones and connected to technology, they're so used to things changing on the fly that they actually respond well to these different training methods. It's very hard to have an athlete just squat for 12 weeks or just power clean for 12 weeks. We want to use two to three weeks of one squat method, maybe a box squat, which we've spoken about before. The next two to three weeks, we might do zercher squats, but we might start from the pins and we might start in a very low position, slightly below parallel. Maybe it's the in season, it would be slightly above parallel. Same thing on the bench press. We might just do lockouts. We might do the floor press. Or we could do deadlifts from blocks of different heights. All of these things were written about and covered 50 years ago, mid to late 60s, maybe some of them in the early 70s. And it's amazing. Here we are 50 years later, and we're still utilizing the methods from almost half a century ago. So guys, I had a great time talking about old school West Side Barbell, Bill Peanuts West stories and how to develop space age strength and boost your strength like a rocket ship. And that's what we do here at the Iron Roots Podcast. We'll talk to you next time. Make sure you visit us at play.pro. 
Check out the older episodes of all the Iron Roots uh, podcasts on video, and you'll also get to see all the other educational resources that have been organized in the Play Pro app. It's an awesome resource, and it's like an all-in-one place. You're not going to have to go all around. So if you're a strength and conditioning coach, if you're a sport coach, if you're a mom or dad trying to help train your kids, it's a one-stop shop for awesomeness. We'll see you next time.